Hello, I'm Kelly McCullen. Two seats on North Carolina's Supreme Court will be decided this election. And we appreciate you out there who want to learn more about these candidates. And as always, we want to welcome the candidates. Richard Dietz and Lucy Inman are joining us for this first conversation about their quest to be on North Carolina's Supreme Court. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks Thank for having us. First question by a coin flip. We'll begin with you, Ms. Inman. Uh, we've done this before for other courts, so we've, 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 we've talked before, but so many new North Carolina voters are out there. Tell us about yourself, your qualifications, and why now's the time for you to join the Supreme Court. Well, thank you so much for having us, Kelly. Um, I grew up in Raleigh. I was raised by parents who taught me and my three brothers the values of hard work, seeking and telling the truth, and respecting all people. I received a great education in North Carolina's public schools, went to NC State University where I got a degree in English, and found myself in court for the first time when I was working as a newspaper reporter. And I learned in that job that people from all walks of life meet their government on a daily basis in the county courthouse. It inspired me to go to law school. I got a law degree from UNC here in Chapel Hill. My first job out of law school, I clerked for the Chief Justice of the North Carolina Supreme Court. I then practiced law for 18 years. In 2010, I became a Superior Court Judge and I presided all across the state in courthouses and trials and hearings. And then in 2014, I was elected statewide to the Court of Appeals and I'm on the, in the last few months of my term there at the Court of Appeals. And I'm running for the North Carolina Supreme Court to protect the rule of law to preserve every person's rights under the federal and state constitution, and to maintain the integrity of our court and our democracy. Thank you. Richard Dietz, uh, you're the other major party opponent of uh, Ms. Inman. Tell us about yourself, your experience. Why is the time right now for you to join the Supreme Court? Sure, and again, thank you for organizing this, and thanks to your viewers for their interest in our state's highest court. Uh, so it's been a privilege for me to serve as a judge on the Court of Appeals for the last eight years, and my journey to the Court of Appeals uh, began because I've always been interested in the kinds of complex cases that go to places like our Supreme Court. So I'm from a small town, uh, mountain family. I was actually the first in my family even to go to college, uh, but I always kind of had a passion for the law, so a lot of that was growing up reading things like you know, John Grisham novels and uh, just being fascinated by the courtroom. So I managed to graduate from college. You know, my family was excited. I made it and I said, I'm going to go on to graduate school. I want to be a lawyer. And I worked hard and I had a lot of success. So I was first in my class graduating from Wake Forest Law School. I have a master's degree from Duke. Um, but the career that I built uh, after I graduated was focused on appeals, which is, of course, what the Court of Appeals and our Supreme Court does. And so um, I became, over the years, probably one of the best known experts in appeals in North Carolina. I handled uh, appeals all over the country, including I've stood and personally argued in the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, you can go and look at courtroom sketches of me um, standing in sort of the Super Bowl of courts and handling cases there. And I think um, what the message that I'm bringing uh, to voters and to the public in the Supreme Court race is I think the court right now needs leadership. And I've shown through my background and that experience and also the work I've done on the court as sort of a consensus builder that I have this ability to bring that leadership to our state's highest court. Well, the Supreme Court, you know, I look on the internet, watch the news, and it's all about these high-level opinions and, and things that make the headlines. There are, I, I've come to know through these forums there are a lot of soft skills and other skills that, that need to be applied in that job. What are some of those skills that you will bring to make this court better if you're elected? Yeah, I think, um, so I'll give you a couple examples. I think a big one is being able to collaborate, um, sort of teamwork and building a consensus because um, the court, of course, sometimes there are judges that disagree uh, on a Supreme Court, but I think the goal should always be not to have any disagreement, uh, to work together and have a unanimous decision. And that can be difficult when you've got seven people with different views uh, working on a court like that. Um, so I've, I built a record in eight years on the Court of Appeals of being someone that can build this kind of consensus. So one thing I often talk about is in eight years on the Court of Appeals, I'm the only judge who's never written what they call a dissent. So where I couldn't agree with the other two judges um, that work with me on a Court of Appeals panel. And I think that uh, is because I work so hard on building that consensus and that teamwork. And I think that's a huge part of what our Supreme Court needs right now more than ever is people that go there, no political mission, 
Um, no plan to kind of try to take over the court, but just work as a team and build that consensus. I also think the other thing is you have to be a good writer uh, because people see judges on TV all the time and uh, they get to talk to the people that come into to the courtroom, but as appellate judges, so appeals court judges, we don't get to do that. We speak through these opinions. So you've got to be able to write in a way that the public can read and understand. You can't use a bunch of legal jargon. And you have to know, let people know through good writing that justice is being done. Uh, Ms. Inman, your skill set, what are you going to bring to this court if you're elected? What does it need and, and, and what gaps are you going to fill as an associate justice? Well, I think the Supreme Court needs what it's always needed. And I agree with um, I agree with Judge Dietz on many of those skills. I think I have them as well. Um, to collaborate requires listening to your colleagues and being able to find out if you disagree with them what the reason is for their position. Um, I think that writing, I agree, is very very important. And as a former newspaper reporter, I've always written decisions thinking I'd like this to be for an audience of high school students. If they can understand, if they can see how the court made its decision, they can judge for themselves whether the court has been fair and impartial. I think it's also important, however, to, with respect, know when, it, know when you have to stand up for what is right. I have not written very many dissents at the Court of Appeals. I'm sure I'm one of the, when, some of the fewest compared to my mm -hmm. colleagues. Um, but unlike Judge Dietz, I have served on panels where I believe the majority was misstating the law or departing from precedent. And I've written a dissent, and the Supreme Court has overturned those decisions based on my dissents. It's very important to be respectful, to be collaborative, but also to know when to stand up for what you know is right. I want to follow up about the sense. Our, one of our partners at the Bar Association, likely a former Chief Justice, no longer in office, with some qu suggested questions. I can't claim this one, but I'll ask you because you'll understand sure. it. What factors will you consider in deciding whether to dissent, bearing in mind that unlike the Court of Appeals, a dissent on the Supreme Court has no immediate effect? A dissent on the Supreme Court has no immediate effect, except that there is it has a great immediate effect to the public. It has a great immediate to the effect, effect to the public. And it's great when we can unanimously decide cases and when the court can speak with one voice. But in, in my, my sort of test for writing dissents at the Court of Appeals is, you know, I just, I can't sleep at night if I have signed on to something that I think is not honest um, or not in keeping with the rule of law. And that's pretty much uh, what I think the test should be at the Supreme Court. We have had more dissents at our Supreme Court in the last year and a half than I think in many, many years before. Um, the, the Supreme Court has been more divided than, than I can recall in my lifetime. And I think that um, I don't know the reason for that because I'm not deliberating on those cases, but I'm talking about cases that are not political at all. Um, there, there are cases in which um, justices are voting together in dissent in 90% of the cases. Same question for you, uh, Mr. Dietz, because uh, you were talking about not having dissents, trying to avoid those. But this question is poised to you. Yeah, I think um, the dissents that we're seeing right now are kind of a reflection, I think, of um, what I see is the, the biggest concern with our Supreme Court, which is that people are starting to look at it and, um, and they see politics. And that troubles me. So I think, um, I agree that the immediate effect of dissents is, um, especially in the kind of, you know, really robust kind of dissent that we're seeing um, over the last couple of years, is that you're kind of seeing two uh, decisions by two different sets of justices on our highest court that are almost shouting at each other, you know, just disagreeing in a very public way. And I think that undermines people's faith in kind of the integrity of the courts. And um, the way to fix that is to be a consensus builder and to help people say, you know, the public is going to read these decisions and they're going to see these arguments. And I just think the public right now, just in politics generally, is so tired of people that are angry. Uh, there's just sort of this mm -hmm. sense of frustration and anger that just permeates politics. And I don't want to see that in the courts, that should be the one place that everyone looks and says, 
When I come here, all that's put aside and we just get fairness. You both were on the Court of Appeals and had choices whether or not to run. So why join a court like that if you perceive it as being, in some cases, uh, a disagreeable court when you come from an environment that is agreeable in many cases? Well, so I've made the whole theme of my campaign leadership for our courts. And that's the message I have for voters is the reason I'm running is I can fix it. I've got the record on the Court of Appeals to show I can go to that court and I can bring them together and help the public see that the court is there um, not to argue over politics, but to defend, defend people's rights, protect the rule of law, and then just to help people resolve their legal disputes fairly. And I think if we can get back to that, we'll restore the public's confidence in our state's highest court. Ms. Inman, uh, we're going to shift over. I want to give you a minute to speak to the voters directly as a closing statement because we're out of time for my questions. We'll give you the first of our closing statements. Tell us why you belong on the Supreme Court. Thank you. It has been the honor of my life to serve our state for the past dozen years as a judge, first in courthouses all across the state and for the last eight years on the North Carolina Court of Appeals. I am running for the Supreme Court at a time when state Supreme Courts across our nation are being asked to make some of the most difficult decisions in our lifetimes. I am running to protect the Supreme Court from partisan politics that we have seen on display at that court and we have seen it at the Court of Appeals as well. I have a record of collaborating with my colleagues, of disagreeing with respect and keeping politics out of the courtroom. And it's very, very important that the public know the court can do its job to keep our community safe, to preserve everyone's rights under the federal and state constitutions, and to preserve public confidence in our courts and ultimately in our democracy. Thank you. And I humbly ask your viewers for their votes and hope to earn them. Thank you, Ms. Emmon. Richard Dees by Coin Flip. You have the last one minute. So over the last eight years as a Court of Appeals judge, I've seen the court system. I'm so proud of our justice system. I'm proud of all the people that work in our court system. And it's really a model, North Carolina's justice system, for the rule of law and what it can do to keep people safe, to help us all grow and prosper together. And throughout our history, the North Carolina Supreme Court has been a central part of that. And I want to keep it that way. And so that's why I'm running, is I can bring the leadership that we need to our Supreme Court to get it back to its core role of just defending our rights and helping people resolve their legal disputes. And that's why I'm asking voters for their vote in November. Richard Deese, Lucy Enman, good to see you again on the forum, and thank you for participating in Election 2022.